Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well and welcome back for another PyTorch video. In this video, we're going to go through how to build a generative adversarial network or GAN for short. More specifically, we're going to build a DC GAN, which stands for a deep convolution GAN to generate images of digits. So from the MNIST dataset. So I'm not really going to go in depth on the theory behind GANs and I'm going to refer you to the paper for that. But I do think you can follow this tutorial without previous knowledge of GANs and at least get an understanding of the implementation as well as an intuition of behind how GANs actually work. So first of all, the kind of general overview to GANs is that we're going to have two parties that's going to play a game against each other. So the two parties are the discriminator and the generator. And the goal of the generator is to produce a fake, uh, in, this, in, in our case, a fake image and trick the discriminator into believing the image is real. And the goal of the discriminator is to be able to distinguish between fake and real images. And so the idea is if both continue to improve, uh, the discriminator classifying being better able to classify fake and real images and the generator be, being able to generate better and better fake images, then theoretically, in the end, we'll have a generator that can produce images that are identical to real ones, So, which is our goal when we create GANs. Here is the original GAN paper from 2014 by Ian Goodfellow. Uh, and I really want, just want to start by going through the, the loss function uh, that's used to train the discriminator and the gener generator uh, network. And this is uh, this one. And so it's going to, uh, the discriminator and the generator is going to play a two-player minimax game. So let's just break this down a little bit. We have, so we have this right here. Um, essentially, X is the image and G of Z is the, the generated, so the fake image. So this is the fake image. This is, so the discriminator wants to um, be able to classify what this is so either zero for fake or one for real and if we're just looking at the game from the discriminator perspective first then what we want to do uh, here we want this to be one since the, the x is the actual image so we want the discriminator to classify this as one uh, this as one and what happens then is the log of of 1 is 0, right? And if it's below 1, it's going to be negative. So what we want to do is we want to maximize with respect to the discriminator. If we're the discriminator, then we want to maximize this right here. As well as if we're the discriminator right here, we also want to, uh, let's see, we want to, we want this to be, uh, to be 0 here. Since if this is 0, then we've actually said yeah well this is not a real one this is a fake one and it's going to be log of one which again is zero which is the maximum if we're looking at, of the log function between zero and one on the other hand if we look at this from the perspective of the generator then we want the discriminant discriminator right here to classify this as zero uh, i mean to classify this as one rather and so we want this to be one from the point of view of the generator, which means that we will have a log of zero, right? Which is, uh, I guess, negative infinity. Um, yeah, or we're very, very close to uh, to zero. It's going to be very a very uh, small val uh, value, so very large negative value, I guess. And so that's the kind of overview of like the loss function and how it's used to train the generator and the discriminator. So here we have the DC GAN paper uh, from 2016. And what I want to focus on a little bit is that it might not be clear how the discriminator and the generator network are going to look like. Uh, so for the discriminator, all we're going to have is just a, a normal convolutional network. Uh, that's going to output a single value in the end between 0 and 1 for how fake or real the image looks like. But the generator net network might be a little bit trickier. So I'm going to go down here for a nice image that they have. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Uh, like this. 
All right, so you can see here from the beginning, we're going to have some Z, which is going to be a no, a random noise. Um, and it's then going to expand on this noise and generate, so in this case, 4x4 four four and 1024 channels. And then it's going to expand it even further. So it's going to be 8x8, 16x16, 32x32. And in the end, it's going to be 64x64 64 64, um, images. So really, the generator is going to start from noise. And it's going to build up an image uh, step by step. And so, so if you're used to normal convolutional layers, this might not look... Um, you might be wondering, well, how do we actually implement this part? Uh, how do we go from this to something larger? Using normal conv layers, we go the opposite. Either we uh, keep the input size the same or we decrease it. We don't make it larger. And so we're going to use something called a transpose convolution uh, to be able to expand uh, the image. It's, you can sort of view it as the opposite of a convolution. I'm not going to go in depth on how they work. I might link some uh, some uh, interesting resources that you can use to learn more about them. But they would really be a another video by itself. Uh, but just so we understand the intuition of how they actually work. Um, so without further introduction to GANs, uh, let's actually start coding. So here we have our imports that we're going to use and we're also going to use uh, the tensor board to be able to visualize how our generated images look like. And then we have this here, we're going to import the discriminator and the generator, which we're going to implement in the model utils. So let's actually start with that one and let's start with the discriminator, so class discriminator and in dot module and then we're going to define our init and so what we're going to send in here is channels image essentially the channels of the image that we're going to send in either MNIST it's going to be one or if we have RGB colored images and channels is going to be three and then so we're going to have features D this is essentially for, we're going to use this to be able to decide how much uh, the, net, the architecture is going to, how many channels it's going to use for each layer. Sort of a hyperparameter for, for our model. First thing we're going to call a super discriminator self, then init. Self.net, we're going to do nn.sequential. And then we're going to define our conv layer. So we're going to do nn.conv 2D. And it's going to take in channels, channels image, features D. And then we're going to do kernel size 4, stride 2, and padding 1. Then we're going to use nn.leaky relu. And after that, we're going to do another conv. So Come to D features D to features D times two, and again we're going to use the exact same kernel stride and padding, and we're going to use nn dot leaky relu. Uh, actually, before that, we're going to use batch norm. So GANs are sort of notoriously known for being very very unstable during training um, and uh, batch norm and Likarelu are two things that have helped uh, stabilize the training of GANs uh, there are sort of a bunch of different tricks uh, that people use to to sort of make the training more stable that um, we're also going to use some of them as we go through uh, the code but so the Likarelu and the batch norm are two examples of that and then we're going to do another com 2 d features d times 2, and then we're going to features d times 4, and same kernel stride and padding. Let's see, so essentially, uh, as you can see, we're just expanding the channels as we go on, 
and what the kernel, so using this kernel stride and padding, we're halving the input size uh, at each comp. So let's say here we have n times, I guess, channels image times 64 by 64. Uh, the input to the next one is going to be, so features D, and then it's going to be 32 by 32. So we're halving the input size for each comp uh, when we're using those kernel stride and padding. And then we're going to do another batch norm 2D with features D times 4. And then another leaky ReLU 0.2. And let's see, we want to do another com 2D. We're going to take as input features D times 4. And wait, let's see, yeah. So features D times 4 and then features D times 8. And again, we want to use those kernel stride and padding. Then batch norm features D times 8. And then leaky relu 0.2 and so if we compute um so it will be 32 after this it will be 16 uh 8 4 then we're going to use another comp so we're going to do features d times 8 and the out channels will get b1 and the kernel size will be 4, stride will be 2, and padding will be 0. So essentially to this, it's going to be n times features d times 8. It's going to be by 4 by 4. When it leaves this one, it's going to be n times uh, 1 by 1 by 1. <clears throat> and then in the end, we're just going to do n and dot sigmoid to make the value between 0 and 1 for how fake or real the images. So that's the network. Uh, the forward is going to be quite simple. All we're going to do is return self.net of x. And so that's the discriminator network. Let's now move on to the generator. Okay, let's copy this and then generator and we're going to have instead of channel image we're going to have channels noise right so in the architecture i showed in the paper it was 100 channels of the noise and then we're going to have features uh, yes yeah, so we're going to have channels image and so that's the image of the channel uh, so the channels of the image that it wants to produce uh, or generate and then features G similarly to the features D except for uh, just our generator then we need to call super generator in it and again self.net will be n and dot sequential and so here we're going to use those and then um, transpose that I talked about and we're going to take input channel noise and it's going to create that into features G times 16. And then we're going to use kernel size to be 4, stride to be 1, and padding to be 0. And again, we're going to use batch norm 2D. Uh, however, we're not going to use the re uh, le leaky relu, but, but you could use it. Uh, but we're going to use n.relu here. And yeah, so using this kernel stride and padding, uh, the output of this is actually going to be, so it's going to be n for the size of our mini batch times features g times 16, I guess, and then times 4 by 4. So the input here is just, the input here is going to be n times channels noise times 1 by 1. After going through this com transpose 2D, it's going to be so the out channels and then it's going to be four by four and then we're going to see a trend using this kernel stride and padding it's just going to double the size so as we exactly as we saw in the paper 
uh, and it's going to do another com transpose 2d of features g times 16 and then features g times 8 and yeah actually we're going to do a strat of 2 and that's going to double that's going to double the um the size of the input and then we're going to do back to Morello again so let's actually copy those and we're going to have times 8 here and let's see let's copy this also and we're going to do times 8 and then times 4 and then times 4 and yes yeah, so we can copy this again going to time times 4 and then times 2 uh, yeah sorry so this should be a padding of 1 on all of these actually and be features g times 2 and then it should be features g times 2 there and then we're going to do another and then dot com transpose to the of features g times 2 channels image and we're going to copy all of those again and at the absolute end we're going to use let's see like this we're going to use nn dot tan h so if we print out the shape here it's going to be n times channels image and then times 64 by 64 so sort of the uh the the image size that we're working from is 64 by 64 and that's so the input here is 64 by 64 and so the output from the generator is also going to be 64 by 64 Okay, so that's the, yeah, actually we need to do the define forward. We're going to return self.net of x. All right, great. Now that we have our gener discriminator and our generator, we're actually ready to start code it. So let's start with some hyperparameters. We're going to use a learning rate, 0 0.002, uh, similar as in the paper. We're going to do some differences compared to the paper, like we're going to use batch size 64 instead of 128, etc. So there are going to be some differences from the paper. Now let's define our image size, which will be 64. Remember, when we use MNIST, we have 28 by 28. So we're going to have to resize them to be 64 by 64. And we're going to use channel image is 1 for MNIST. And then we're going to do use channel noise. Remember that, um, so we saw in the paper it was a 100 channels uh, long for the noise, so that vector. Essentially, we're going to use uh, 256 instead, since it's, um, I don't know, it's reported to, to work better than using 100. Um, I'm not sure if it makes a big difference, but... We can try that and then we can use num epochs to 10. And then we're going to use features D to be 16 and features G to be 16. So this is like uh, if you make these larger, then you're going to expand the number of channels. Uh, if you want to do it as in the paper, uh, you should set this to 64. We don't really need that large of a network for MNIST, so we can keep them at 16. Then we're going to do my transforms. We're going to do transfer.compose and we're going to do so let's see uh, transforms dot resize first of all and then image size we're going to do transforms dot to tensor and then transform dot normalize point five then we're going to do data set is data sets dot MNIST. We're going to do root to be data set train equals true. And then just transform is my transform and download equals true. Then create our data loader with batch size equals batch size and then shuffle equals true. 
and then we're going to do device torch.device we're going to set to CUDA uh, if torch.cuda dot is available uh, otherwise we're going to run on the CPU so then what we want to do is we want to create our so create discriminator and generator and so we already created those right we're just going to do net d we're going to call it discriminator i'm going to do ch uh, channels image and then features d and then let's do dot to device go to the center and net g will be so pretty much the same thing just for the generator we're going to have a few different inputs. So we're going to input the channel noise, the channel's image, and then features G. And we're going to do two device. Now we want to, so we want to set up optimizer for G and D. We're going to do optimizer D. We're going to use the atom optimizer. And let's do net D dot parameters. And the learning rate will just be learning rate. And then we're actually going to specify the betas. So the values for the, so the hyperparameter for the atom optimizer. And we're going to use optimize, and uh, we're going to use beta 1 to be 0 0.5. And then we're going to use the standard 0.999. Uh, if you're no expert, like if, you have, if you're not, if you're unsure about atom optimizer, then yeah, don't worry about this. This is just some hyperparameters for atom. And then we're going to do optimize g optim.atom and then we're going to net g dot parameters and then again we're going to use the exact same and then let's make sure that the models are both in training mode so let's do net g train net d dot train they should be by default but let's let's just make sure and then what we're going to use for our loss function, so the one that matches as we saw in the paper is nn.bce loss. Then, so you can check out this, the, like the documentation for this one, but it's going to be very f similar to the one that we looked at in the paper. And then let's do, so let's say that real label is going to be one and then let's do fake label will be zero and also uh, the images that we're going to generate we want them to be the same each time so we can sort of see how they progress in their uh at so how they improve so let's do some fixed noise so this is going to be the same uh, and let's do yeah, so 64. Um, yeah, so let's just do 64. And then channels noise and then 1, 1. Uh, just to have it, so in this case, it's going to be 256 by 1 by 1. And then let's do dot to device. And yeah, so let's actually do all of like step by step. We're going to do we can wait with actually let's do print starting uh, training and here we're going to start our training loop so we're going to do for epoch in range of num epochs then we're going to do for batch index comma data comma targets in enumerate of the data loader everything is pretty standard so far then we're going to come to the point where we want to train uh, the discriminator. And remember, what we want to do when we train the discriminator, so we're going to train them to separate. We want to maximize the log of D of X. And we also want to maximize log of 1 minus D of G of Z. So this G of Z is the sort of the... Um, the generated image, right? So this is the loss function that we looked at previously. And so I mentioned previously that there are some of some hacks that they use to train GANs. 
one of those hacks is to um, first send in all real images and train on all of those real images and then send in all fake images and train the discriminator on all of those fake images and then after doing that we want to train the the generator right so this is this two parts we're gonna do first train discriminator and then a trick we're gonna use is we're gonna separate uh, into two parts of training the discriminator so let's go through them step by step first we're gonna do net D dot zero grad then we're gonna do actually let's do this at the absolute beginning let's do data dot to device so we're gonna get it to CUDA uh, and this batch size is gonna be data dot shape of zero then what we're going to do is we're going to do label. It's going to be torch dot ones of batch size. And we're going to do two device. All right. So these are all the real images. So now we're going to send in all real images to the discriminator. And one thing, so this might be, this is another one of those hacks, as I mentioned, we're going to multiply this by 0 0.9 instead of having them as ones. So this is essentially going to make the discriminator not be uh, just super confident on its predictions. Um, yeah, so this is just one of those hacks. And then we're going to do output. It's going to be net D of data. And then we're going to reshape and just make it into a long vector. So remember, this is going to be between 0 and 1, depending on if it believes it's uh, if it's fake or real and we're gonna send in all real images right we just send it in the data and so we want all of those to be one if, if the discriminator is 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 good and then we're gonna do loss d we're gonna call loss d real for the real images we're gonna call criterion of output comma label and and then we're also going to compute, let's see, D of X. We're going to just do output dot mean and then just do dot item. So we're just going to sort of uh, compute what was the mean um, confidence of our discriminant for those. This is just for uh, printing, like we can print uh, and we can sort of use that later on. Uh, yeah, so now... We want to generate uh, first, so we're not done with the discriminator for, uh, yet. We now want to first do noise. So let's do torch dot random of batch size, and then channels noise one one, and then dot two device. And we're gonna do fake fake images. We're gonna do net g of noise. Okay, so we're gonna call our generator. Right. This is this part. We're going to call the generator on this noise Z. And then we're going to do label, which is going to be torch dot zeros, right? Because since they're all fake, then we're going to do device. Now, just to be a little bit confusing, we're going to multiply. Uh, let's see. We're going to do torch dot ones. We're going to multiply that by 0 0.1. So again, this is one of those hacks just by multiplying by 0 0.9 we're gonna multiply by 0 0.1 just to make the yeah so it's not super confident either way and not that it's all fake or all um, all real and then we want to classify so the fake batch we want to do net d of fake and we don't want to back propagate on net G, right? So what we're going to do, uh, since we're calling on this room, we just want to train the discriminant. We don't want to, uh, I guess, worsen our model, uh, our generator model now when we're training the discriminant. So we're going to do fake.detach, essentially telling PyTorch, don't calculate or don't trace these um, gradients. 
and then we're going to do dot reshape minus one and we're going to do loss d fake again criterion of output comma label then we're going to do loss d is going to be loss d real plus the loss d of the fake images right so we we separated into two parts we trained on real images and we trained on fake images then we're going to do loss d dot backward and we're going to do an optimizer step optimizer d dot step okay that was the training for the discriminator now we're going to train the generator and so i'm going to be a little bit confusing again we said before that we want to minimize this with respect to the generator but we can also view this as we want to maximize log of d of g of z with respect to the generator so this is an equivalent way of looking at it let's say that we want to we want the discriminant to see this as one right uh, so that that is maximizing the log if this is zero uh, that's not what we want from the point of the generator so then that would be negative right if it's very close to zero then it's going to be minus a very very negative value so we can sort of view this as maximizing this instead then let's start with doing net g dot zero grad and then label we're going to do torch dot ones batch size and then dot two device and here we're not going to multiply by 0 0.9 or anything like that then we're going to do output is net d of fake and then we're going to reshape to minus one and we're going to use the same fake ones we used here except now we're actually going to back prop we're going to use back prop on those so we're not going to use the dot detach as we did here and then we're going to do last g which is criterion of output comma label again uh, i recommend you check out how this locks function actually works just so that you're 100 percent uh, sure of what goes on in how we compute the loss here the yeah so what we're doing here is actually yeah we for that check out how this loss function works um we want to maximize this so just um if you understand that that's good then look at the loss function and uh, you'll see that if this if we do this if we set the labels to ones we're going to maximize exactly this expression since the output here is net d of fake uh, of the fake images and then we're going to do loss g dot backward and then we're going to do optimizer g dot step now what we want to do also is we want to see how does these images progress right how do the they improve as we increase uh, as we train it, the network more and more so we're gonna we're gonna do uh, here we're going to do writer real and we're going to do writer fake for our tensor board I'm just going to copy in those ones here yeah so we just do summary summary writer and then we just uh, where we're going to store them check out my ten last tutorial on tensor board if you want more in depth on this but after that we're just going to we're just going to actually do if if batch index uh, modulus 100 is zero then we're gonna print we're gonna do an f string we're gonna do epoch and we're gonna do epoch and then out of num epochs i'm gonna do batch batch index out of so the length of data loader and then let's also print the loss so the loss of both the of the discriminant which is just loss d and then let's format it nicely with four floating points and then 
loss g since it's gonna be actually quite long let's do another line okay we can't do that let's do loss g and loss g dot for f and let's also do let's see i want to do another line here is that how you do it yeah and then we're going to do d of x going to be d of x and then again dot for f all right so that should print it uh, nicely for us and let's see we want to I hope there's no error in the indention here. Oh my god, that's so oh, okay. Let's see. We're gonna do Yeah, we're gonna do with torch dot no grad. No grad. We're gonna use that uh, fixed noise as we did previously we're going to generate some fake images and then we're going to do image grid real we're going to use torch vision dot utils dot make grid and then uh, we're going to use data up to 32 let's say we want 32 images then we're going to use normalize equals true just so that nice is a little bit nicer uh, the plot is a little bit nicer and then we're going to use image grid fake and we're going to use fake here instead and then we're just going to do writer real dot add image and let's do mnist real images and then image grid real and again let's do image grid fake and I'm gonna fake images yeah that should be it hope there's no indentation error from that and let's see if I can bring out interaction Python like this uh, that one and all right my transforms now hopefully there's no no errors uh but there always are so let's pray cute and current all right great seems to actually start training what we're gonna do is i'm gonna open up let's see i'm gonna open up this right here and we're gonna run tensor board and we're gonna uh, use the folder runs and then I'm gonna yeah so I'm gonna let this train for a little bit and I'll get back to you uh, in TensorBoard and how it looks so here in TensorBoard we have now images of the real images right here and then we can sort of trace how it's been training and it's training currently but we can see that in the beginning yeah so in the beginning here it's just absolute noise and then we can see a gradual gradual improvement and so this is after let's see this is after about one epoch and so this is how it looks right now so we can see that there's a substantial improvement and it's actually starting to look like the MNIST real images right it's not there yet um, let's let it train for a little bit longer and let's see how it looks like and sort of we can see after training it for a few more epochs we can see that it has really improved and uh, the, the some of them at least looks uh, looks very similar to the real images and uh, so I guess training it for a bit longer would actually improve it even more um, yeah so I think if, if you would you could use the same type of architecture and you could use it for any type of data really um, so you could use it for I guess Cypher 10 or or other data sets uh, 
this was just a ex simple example using MNIST of how to, to uh, create the gener uh, the GAN network. So if you enjoyed the video, uh, leave a like. Uh, if you have any questions, then leave them in the comment. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.